So I've been getting this question a lot, whether it's been YouTube comments, people sliding in my DMs, and the Discord server that I run. And the question is, look, is it still even worth learning to code in 2025? And the, honestly, I get why people are asking this. The job market is brutal out there right now. And not only brutal for junior engineers just trying to get their first job, but brutal for everyone, for junior engineers, for mids and seniors, for technical leads, for project managers, everybody, anybody that's involved in this technical space is having one heck of a time trying to find a job right now. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some of my opinions on if it's honestly even still worth learning to code in 2025 or if you should skip it and move on and do something else. And like everything else in the software engineering field, it's not a simple answer. It's not a yes or a no, it's a, it depends. So let's break that down, let's talk about it, let's dive in. Okay, let me start this video by just saying yes. It is still worth learning to code, but I totally acknowledge that we're in a really rough patch in our industry right now. Finding your first job, or honestly even your second, third, 10th job in 2025 just sucks right now. It is not 2023 or 2022 when everyone was just handing out jobs willy-nilly. It's certainly not 2021 where it was like, look, if you could spell JavaScript, you're probably going to get a front end job paying $140,000 or more in the United States. And now I think the market is correcting itself. My personal opinion on this is I do think that in those early 2020 years, we just overhired. COVID put everybody from home, all of these new businesses remotely started. And I think things just got a little crazy. And I think that pendulum swung a little too far and we did overhire. And now I think it's correcting itself and we're seeing these mass layoffs. People are expecting more. Obviously AI has accelerated, accelerated for some of you out there, all of the work that we're doing. And we don't need as much of a head count as we once used to. But I would still say yes, coding in 2025 is still absolutely incredible. It is still one of the most fulfilling careers that you could imagine. You get to build things that people are genuinely using and loving. You get to build services and tools that whole companies rely on to do their business. And for me, you get to solve problems and create things that just didn't exist anymore. And look, even though there are a lot of job layoffs, the money in this industry is still there too. And I think not enough people talk about the fact that it's cool to just get a job as an engineer because you want the paycheck. You still need to work hard and do all of those things. But I think we'd be lying if we didn't say that, yes, the money is still good too. And I don't know about y'all, but I get giddy all the time when I am building a new tool and I'm like, dude, I'm literally in my pajamas in my bedroom building this tool that millions and millions of people are going to use and hopefully love and hopefully it's bug free. But how freaking cool. And where else can you find a job that allows you to do that? No shit, I have built some of the coolest things I've ever produced. Watching Harry Potter, working on some code on the side, sitting on my couch in my living room, and it has been an absolutely incredibly amazing time. And this maybe sounds like a little bit of a hot take, but I believe that the demand for software engineers is still out there, even though we're seeing more and more jobs disappearing. I do strongly believe that the demand for an engineer is still out there. It is just changing a little bit, which gives me to my point number two. I'm going to flat out say no. Do not go and learn to code. Do not go and become a software engineer if you think you want easy money, if you want a really cushy job where it is easy. Because I'm here to tell you, because of job layoffs, because of AI, because of the way that the world is turning right now, software engineering is harder than it's ever been before. It is more accessible. And I think a lot of outsiders are like, it's easier than it's ever been before. And oh my goodness, you should learn to code because, well, everybody should learn to code. And I don't, fully buy into that. I don't necessarily disagree with it, but I think it misses the point that real software engineers today feel in their everyday life. The headaches of being overran by AI, the increased pressure from managers and things like that. Software engineering is the hardest job it's ever been in the year 2025. Think about all of the ghost developers we had 2023 and 2024. And if you're new here, a ghost developer was somebody who just kind of chilled under the radar. They did just enough work to kind of get through their sprints. They probably took a little slack from their managers, but overall they were just floated on through and they spent all of their time working on side hustles or going to the park or going to the gym or just doing anything but work. Well, I'm afraid to tell you that now I'm willing to bet most of those ghost engineers are seeking jobs and do not have any work going on for themselves right now. Even before AI, 
if you were that engineer that was copy and pasting from Stack Overflow, calling it a day and signing off for the day, this field probably isn't for you anymore. I think a lot of managers, especially because of AI, are growing a very short tolerance for people that just aren't pulling their own weight. I think us engineers, especially younger generations, are really keen on everybody needs to pull their own weight. Everyone needs to try their hardest. Everyone needs to bring their unique individual skills to the table. And that doesn't always mean you're producing more code than other people. There's a whole nother slew of options and unique traits that you can bring to a team that empower the team. Maybe you're the connector. Maybe you're the integrator. Maybe you are the one who slings the most code. But if you are not pulling your weight in 2025, and if you don't want to try your hardest, this field is probably not for you anymore. I encourage you to go look somewhere else. And speaking of developing specialized skills, that is where today's sponsor Brilliant comes at a perfect time. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. What makes Brilliant such a game changer for engineers is their uniquely effective learning approach. Look, I don't know about y'all, but I cannot stand sitting in online courses or just reading documentation. I am an engineer. I wanna tinker. I wanna peel things apart. I wanna break stuff. And that's exactly where Brilliant is, honestly, in my personal opinion, above other platforms. They allow you to have all of these interactive lessons, all of these gadgets and gizmos, all of the things that you want to do as an engineer and see how you can break it and then learn why you couldn't break it, learn why you did break it. And for me, that's the most effective way of learning. Go and have all of the hands-on material that I want backed with all of the evidence from the training courses that they provide. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from Stanford, MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, Google, and more. Now, one thing I have been loving recently is their courses on Python. Look, AI, ML, data engineering, data is the new oil, such a important topic as a software engineer today. Such an important topic if you want to become a software engineer in 2025. The Python fundamentals are so important. It's an easy language to walk into, and it is applicable to so much of the world and what we have going on today. If you need to run the pandas library, that's all Python. If you want to figure out some of the other data, it's all Python. If you want to be working in and out of Jupyter notebooks and scripts, Python is generally your go-to language. And look, their Python courses help you build this timeless problem-solving skills that let you debug faster, write cleaner code, get more involved in today's world as a software engineer. And honestly, I think that's exactly what you need to stand out in today's competitive market. You need that competitive edge. So their Python courses, and honestly, all of their programming courses are perfect for engineers of any level to strengthen your core fundamentals with lessons covering problem solving techniques, algorithms, data structures, practical coding patterns that make you faster and more valuable. And look, speaking as a parent himself, I can't always find time in front of my computer or with a laptop or my tablet. I'm always on the go. My kids are in sports. I have a life outside of this, and this is exactly where Brilliant has you covered. Brilliant has a mobile app that makes it easy to learn anywhere right from your phone at a soccer field, at gymnastics, in the dang pickup school line. Anywhere you go where you cannot get in front of your computer, Brilliant has a mobile app that allows you to just go through micro learning sessions rather than just doom scrolling and not doing anything productive to help yourself and to get further into this career. So to try Brilliant for free, head over to brilliant.org forward slash Andrew Peacock or click the top link down below. Also with my unique link, you get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So thank you so much, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it. All right, so I gave you an it depends, yes and no. Now here's a little, something more tactical, something that I think you can do to become a little more competitive. I think the developers that are killing it are not fully bought into AI bro or completely against AI. And in my last video about AI hype, I saw a lot of comments on both sides of the aisle. And I think the best developers and no offense to any of you for who are so strongly on one side or the other, but I think the best developers are somewhere right in the middle. They acknowledge, hey, I don't need AI to do everything. It's still fun to code, but they also see that they would fall behind if they weren't using AI at some level of their practice. Maybe they're not copy and pasting and vibe coding their way through things and they're reading every line of code or doing their pull request very thoroughly, but surely they're not spending their time creating 
honestly canned React components that are rebaked from Shad CN anyways. And I think the other developers who want to stand out, especially in this AI empowered world, are to focus on skills like system design, like debugging complex issues. I cannot count the amount of times I've seen engineers just throw errors into ChatGPT and say, hey, fix it. And ChatGPT has no access to your code. Maybe with Cursor, this is a little better, but I'll tell you, it is a serious senior software engineer skill on debugging stuff out in production when you don't have access to the code, when it is limited things that you can do. It's learning how to read logs and do complex things. And I think because of AI, us engineers are gonna have to have more time learning the business requirements. I don't know, I like the business side of this. You know, it's why I want to be a solopreneur, it's why I want to do indie hacking, it's why I build in public. So I like the marketing, I like the business side, I love the code side, but I like, I like all of it. I know that's not some of you engineers out there. I know you could say, ugh, requirement, disgusting, or product design, disgusting, or talking to clients. Even worse, don't make me do it, I will kick and scream. I think the tides are shifting where you may need to lighten up on that stance or find another way of not being in the limelight and giving demos in that nature. I think coding in 2025 is still one of the most powerful things that you could do with your life. I think it's an amazing job opportunity with quite frankly, still amazing money to support you and a family. I think it gives you a place to be creative. And with AI, I think it now more than ever, we need to collaborate and be creative and allow AI to stitch things together for us. But this field of ours is a magical, magical place where you get to do fun things and be creative. You get to build systems and solve problems that have never been solved before. And you get to build things that people are just going to learn to love and make it part of their work system and part of their daily routine. It gets me so darn excited to talk about. I love the fact that I can start with a blank IDE and come out with a new mobile app that allows you to track your daily habits or whatever it may be. I don't know, that part of engineering is still really, really exciting for me. I'm very curious on where y'all see this. Should you code in 2025? Should you not code in 2025? What's the take? I wanna know what y'all's opinions, so drop a comment down below. And with that, I will see you all next week. Peace.